In today's episode, I want to answer a question that I received from a civil engineer. Is it better to become an expert in one area of civil engineering or become knowledgeable in, in the many different disciplines? Or as some people like to say, become a jack of all trades. I struggled with this question during the first five years of my civil engineering career, but I have some advice in this video that I believe can help you regardless of your experience level in your career. This video is brought to you by PPI, a leader in engineering exam prep in the FE and PE exam since 1975. Before we dive in, we'd like to recognize our sponsor for this episode, PPI, a leader in engineering exam prep for the FE and PE exams. PPI provides expert prep courses and study resources designed to help you pass the FE and PE exams the first time. PPI's live online courses include hours of lectures, problem solving demonstrations, exam strategy sessions, office hours, and a passing guarantee. Check out PPI today at ppi2pass.com to see all the options available for FE and PE exam prep. Now let's dive into today's episode. So in the world of civil engineering, there are many different disciplines, transportation, geotechnical, there's site civil or land development, which is what I practiced, water resources, and many more. And this question that kind of inspired this episode is a question I actually wrote an article on a few years ago for ASCE, is something that I struggled with for the first five or so years of my civil engineering career. For your long-term civil engineering career development, is it better to pick one of these disciplines and become an absolute expert in that area? Or is it better to become knowledgeable in many of these disciplines? Or as some people like to say, become a jack of all trades. And it's a tough one. And I did really struggle with this because it can be very beneficial as a civil engineer to know a lot of these different disciplines, depending on your role, depending on the company you work for. But for some civil engineering professionals, it could be very beneficial to specialize in a very, very, very small niche and become one of the best in that field, in that geographic area. That can provide some great career opportunities and career growth. So I guess what I'm saying is that the answer to this question is going to be different for every person that asks the question, right? Depending on his or her experience, goals, location type of company you work for. So what I'd like to do in this episode is I want to talk through a couple of different scenarios and hopefully you will fall into one of those. So first, I want to think about this question from the perspective of an early career civil engineer. Maybe you're a recent graduate or you're just about to graduate, which means you probably have no idea what each of the disciplines are in civil engineering. And you certainly probably don't know which one you want to specialize in yet. I know for me, when I graduated from college, my thought was, I'm going to become a structural engineer, right? That sounded exciting to me. I could design bridges and buildings and things of that nature. And then I got into structural engineering and I tried it and it just wasn't for me. I didn't personally like it that much. It wasn't as exciting for me as I thought it would be, where as for someone else, it might have been, right? So my advice to those of you that are at this level in your career is do not specialize at this point. Try to get exposure to as many of the different civil engineering disciplines as you possibly can. Learn a little bit about each one, and then you'll start to get a feel for which one you like most. Now, the company that you work for, and this is important to kind of think through, they will determine kind of which disciplines you have access to, right? If it's a large company with lots of different disciplines and you can try them. If it's a smaller company that only does one thing specifically, then you're probably only going to get to try that. So you have to think about that. Some companies in the world of civil engineering also have rotational programs, which is something you can look for, meaning that if you start there out of school, they put you on a rotation for maybe three months or six months where you're working in each of the different departments or divisions so you can try different things and you can get some firsthand experience and then you can decide which discipline you like or if you want to specialize in one of these. And the benefit of doing this for the company, in my opinion, is you want people working on what they like to be working on, right? So if they create this rotational program, 
Now they can really get people aligned with their passions and their goals. And of course, for the participant in their careers, this is very beneficial because without that rotational program, they may, might not have had access to see the different types of civil engineering. And so for me, like I said, when I came out of school, I wanted to do structural. I tried it. It wasn't for me. I tried geotechnical. It wasn't for me. And I found land development. I started doing some stormwater design. I started doing some site layouts. And I really liked land development. I ended up sticking with that for my civil engineering career. But it was only because I went to a company that afforded me the opportunity to try those different disciplines. Now, I'm not speaking out against small companies either. I did my internship with a small civil engineering company. And the benefit of that is that you get to try a lot of different things. Right? You can manage almost a project at a very young age because there aren't a lot of people else there that can do that. Right, So you have to kind of weigh the benefits, but that's some advice that I would give to an early career civil engineer considering whether or not to specialize. Now, if you're a civil engineering project manager, right, you're progressing your career, you've progressed into the project manager level, it may become advantageous to start to specialize in a discipline. It can become difficult to have a good working knowledge of many different disciplines, right? In order to keep up with new guidelines and new codes. And so focusing on one area can be very beneficial and helpful to your career, to your company, and also to the clients that you serve. I did eventually specialize in septic system design. And I did become one of the go-to engineers on that topic in my geographic area. And it was very beneficial for me and my company because if you needed a septic system designer, you had a piece of land that had, didn't have a lot of flat area and you were constrained and you had to get very creative in your septic system design, they could contact us because I had expertise in some special systems that we could utilize. So as you start to progress through your career, especially as you're getting towards that project manager stage, I think that there could be, it could be very beneficial to specialize um, and really build up your expertise. Now, that doesn't mean that you shouldn't be aware of the other disciplines or knowledgeable in them. However, really getting involved in one discipline can, again, make you that go-to person. So that's something to think about as you progress. Now, let me give you a couple other scenarios. And I alluded to this one earlier. Let's look at working for different sized companies. So let's say that you're working for a small civil engineering company and you intend to do that for your career. If you work for a small civil engineering firm, then it probably does make more sense to kind of be that jack of all trades and have knowledge of all these different disciplines, even as you progress in your career. Because as I said earlier, the nature of a small firm will require you to do many things. So you can still kind of have one area that you want to focus on, but you have to be very open to learning these other disciplines. And what you should also focus on doing if you work in a small company is try to focus on developing kind of a stable of local consultants in these areas outside of your expertise that you can go to as needed. And I'm going to expand on this one a little bit because this was my experience um, when I was in college. I've got an internship at a very small civil engineering firm, a handful of people, and I worked at that firm throughout college. And like I said, I did everything from sweep the floors to go out in the field and design plans, right? Draw up design plans. So you really do get a lot of responsibilities in a small company and you're able to see all the different aspects of a project at a very young age, which is great, but it's a lot. You know, it's a lot that you have to try to wrap your head around, but it can be very beneficial. And what will happen in that scenario is you're going to also talk to clients at a younger age, right? Which I think is great personally from my experience. But if you're going to talk to clients at a younger age, you want to be well-rounded and confident to be able to talk to them. And what I found in terms of confidence is understanding the different aspects of civil engineering. So I started as a surveyor in the field, which helped me to understand how a project site was surveyed and what went into the survey and the layout of the, of the, of the parcel. And maybe if there were some kind of encumbrances or if there were uh, easements that were running through a property, I understood what that meant and how to deal with that, right? My, my wife happens to be a geotechnical engineer. So I was able to have a lot of conversations with her and learn about that. 
And what I'm getting at here is working in a small firm, if you're communicating with clients and you're able to say to them, well, we did the survey and we had, there were some issues on the survey that we were able to work out for you. It's a couple of easements in the back and here's how this could affect you. We also did a geotechnical investigation. You have some clay soils in this area of the site, which means we're going to have to maybe put the septic system in the front of the property, right? You want to be able to really talk to the client and fill them in about the different areas of the project. And if you work for a small firm, you're likely going to have to do that because you don't have all these other disciplines around you that could sit around the table with you and talk about the geotech or the survey or the structural and things of that nature. Now, like I said earlier, you should work on developing a team of consultants that can help you in that regard, of course, but it's good for you to understand that. Now, let's look at one more scenario here. What if you're working for a midsize to a larger civil engineering company? When you work in a larger company, it'll be a little bit easier to specialize in one specific area. And the reason for this is because you will have access to experts in most of these other disciplines right within your firm, right? You can walk down the hallway, you can pick up the phone, you'll find a geotechnical engineer or a structural engineer, and you'll be able to consult with them or even bring them into a meeting with you. You're also going to have a source of work and requests in your expertise from other people in the company. Right. So if you do really develop an expertise and you're working for a mid-size or large company, kind of like I like I did after I graduated, because the company I worked for it was acquired. Right. So now I find myself going from a small company to a mid-size company. Now I would have people calling me and asking me about septic systems within the company because they knew I was the expert. And there's value in that in your career. Right. If everyone in your company is looking at you as an expert on a certain topic, think about how that's going to spur on your career growth in that company, right? They know that you have that expertise. And that was very beneficial for me in growing my career, having that expertise within a firm. So I know I've gone through some different scenarios here. So I want to try to wrap it up and like summarize it for you, because I do think that this is a question that not only most civil engineers deal with, but if you're a manager, you're an experienced civil engineer, you may have to provide some mentoring advice to some of your staff or give some career advice to some of your younger staff on this question. So we looked at four specific scenarios. If you're an early career civil engineer, I highly recommend that you try to get exposure to as many different disciplines as you can. Look for companies that offer a rotational program, or maybe when you're in your senior year, if you're in graduate school, you could take a variety of courses to help you do that. Um, those are some ways that you can get access to different disciplines as an early career civil engineer. The second scenario we looked at was as you start to get towards that project manager stage of your career, then you probably want to specialize, right? So maybe you went through a rotation, you tried some different things when you were younger, you settled on one and you start to develop that expertise and become a go-to expert in your field as you grow in your career. Then we looked at Two last scenarios, if you want to focus it on the company that you work for. If you know you're going to work for a small civil engineering company for your career, you only want to work with smaller firms, then it makes a lot of sense to stay more general and learn about all the different areas of civil engineering, because you're going to probably have to speak on a lot of those. You're not going to have access to experts down the hall from you on those, um, and you'll be able to give the client kind of a better experience. However, if you work for a mid-size to large company or you plan to in the future, again, specializing becomes easier for you to do and probably more beneficial because you're going to have all those experts around you that can support you when you need their help. And you can become the real go-to person within your company that people will reach out to, to learn information about your expertise, to get you on their projects, to have you talk to their client, right? You become a real commodity. You drive real value within your firm. And that can really help you in terms of, you know, building your career. So I hope you found these scenarios helpful for you, because I think it is that many people, it is a, a challenge or a question that many civil engineers sh struggle with. And if it applies to you, try one of these out. If you're a leader or experienced, then give this, feel free to give this advice and share this advice with any of your staff. I hope you enjoyed the episode today and I hope my advice will help you to tackle this important question if you're struggling with it. I'd ask you to please do two things 
before you check out here. Firstly, if you have any questions for me that I can answer on future videos about your civil engineering career, please put them in the comments below. And then be sure to subscribe to our channel because we will be putting out future videos to help engineers become better managers and leaders and to answer your questions about your civil engineering career. I'll see you next week.